young Australian with a dream of winning the World Rally Championship. One of the most exciting drivers in this year's again, Molly Taylor. Molly Taylor. Molly Taylor. Molly Taylor. Molly Taylor. Season one champion, Molly Taylor. As a passionate racing driver from a young age, it was no secret to me that combustion engines powered the entire motorsport landscape. But throughout my career, I've noticed a huge shift in the ways competitive racing series have taken steps to reduce their carbon emissions. Now, at the forefront of this shift is all-electric racing series Extreme E, a high-impact, adrenaline fueled off-road EV championship that promotes equality and sustainability in racing. As an Eon Next Veloce racing driver, I'm always looking to fight the climate crisis, participating in community-focused legacy projects across the globe, searching for new and innovative ways to power racing cars without damaging the planet, and fundamentally making small changes in our day-to-day -day lives that equate to big results. That's why I've been invited by Eon to the Eon Drive Testing Lab in Germany. I want to find out more about the ways that Eon are paving the way in electric mobility and why innovative energy solutions are an essential step when it comes to fighting the climate crisis. Hi Molly, nice to meet you. Timo, hi, welcome in the Eon Testing Lab. Thanks so much for having us, can't wait to have a look around. So then let's take a tour. So here we are in, in the Eon Testing Lab. Um, it's 10,000 square meters in total we have here on the side. The focus areas are future energy home, PV, battery and a lot of immobility. So really trying to be as best prepared for the future as we can. Uh, we see that we have more and more climate problems on that planet Earth, which will mean we also need to test much deeper under climate conditions, so minus 40 to plus 60 degrees, because we will see all the extremes much more often. Yeah? So there are a lot of things which we are working on to be more innovative, to find the right new products, more sustainable solutions, and also to improve the solutions for the customer, meaning improving um, sustainability at home charging, so PV charging, uh, making all these algorithms working with all the different cars, hardware, and all the things around to have in the end a more CO2 neutral world and product. In terms of fighting the climate crisis, it really is important to have the, the big solutions, but also day to day something that we can all be a part of as well. How, how important is that kind of combination to look at every single avenue? I think that's one of the big key elements and that's why it's so needed because we started typically with all the B2C solutions, so the home charging, then we started with PV optimized, green charging, then different time tariffs where the energy is greener for example and on the other side we're now starting to copy it to the big charging solutions, yeah? meaning truck depots, much more power, much more energy bedarf. In the end there are a lot of benefits, once we do a learning here we can easily copy it to here, just extending and scaling but this gives us a chance to be much faster as we're doing both levels and every time learning from each other. So now we are in the area of future energy home. Uh, you see a lot of products for PV, battery, uh, smart energy management solutions, energy management integrations uh, and also wall boxes. This is also part of the future energy home business. And why is the, the testing that you're doing here, why is that so important? It's just Every time we're searching for a new product, typically we have a wide range of products, uh, meaning we are scouting, we're finding 10 new products, and now we need to find the right one. And they're really unpacking, installing, taking a look that the installation is safe, um, that all the installation are properly done, can be done by our technicians, that they have the right tools to do it, and also then to do it safely. Um, and that the finished product is working well, and the most critical part is safe for our customers. So Timo, I've been told to put my race suit on and it looks like we're standing in front of a giant freezer. So what, what, am, I, <laughs> what am I in for? Yeah, I think it makes sense to have the suit on. Okay. Um, we're now in front of our climate chamber. And that's the one which are capable to do from minus 40 to plus 60. Wow. And so really testing the product under this climate condition, really charging, so under full power. So capable to do up to two megawatt of charging. And now wow. I prepared something for you. What temperature have we got now? Do you like to find out or should I tell you? We don't get this temperature in Australia, do we? In Australia, no, don't see. So. <laughs> minus 30. Yes. I just decided to not have minus 40, I think. I've, never, so I've nice. never been more than like minus 20 before. So. Yeah, so minus 30, I think that will be an experience. So let's take a look in the climate chamber. Let's do it. It's quite refreshing. It definitely 
does not get this cold at home. For the first, the first 30 seconds are fine, but now it's starting to really get, it's really getting a bit fresh. Just going to uh, charge my car. Oh, I don't know how you use your hands in this. I feel like this has got wind chill as well. Okay, now it's starting to get really cold. I think my nose is freezing. Oh, wow. I'm getting locked in now. I've gone grey. I think my nose is frozen. So, how was the experience? It was a bit chilly. I, uh, I'm getting some feeling back in my face. I feel like I can't talk properly. Um, it was really cold. And you see like instantly just all the ice that forms, your hair starts to freeze. In Extreme E we compete in so many different extreme locations and temperatures. So we're testing all our equipment, you know, out there uh, in, in the environment that we're in. But how important is it to have these facilities that aren't out um, in the north of Scandinavia that are here and in more controlled environment? Why do you do that? You are in the end on the second phase, meaning the product must already work under the climate conditions. So I must guarantee you yep. that for your racing, your charger is capable to handle the temperature and then you can test on site with different cars and so on. Totally makes sense. But the first step is a step we need to do in a controlled environment like here to be reproducible. With a greater understanding of the importance of rigorous EV testing, I wanted to know more about the value that holds for people at home and why continued advancements in EV technology can encourage more people to make the switch from petrol to electric. I've headed over to the EV charging points at the lab to talk with Scott Somerville from E.ON UK to learn a little more about the future of EVs and its importance in E.ON's wider ecosystem. Scott, over my racing career, I've seen a big shift um, towards EV racing, um, renewable energy. How has E.ON been a driving force behind that as well on the, the mobility side and just general day to day? Yeah, I think there's been so much change in energy just as there has in your sport as well. And I think the thing we've always concentrated on is how can we make it really simple and easy to use for the end user? And that's whether it's a big business or at a city scale right down to you know us in our homes and all the rest of it. It's amazing to think that you know, it's come so far, but also, and like all we're seeing here with the testing and development of new innovations, and as you say, how it can be more of a, a broader spectrum and, and really all these other opportunities that I guess we never really had the option to explore, but now with this technology, there's so much more that's coming in the future as well. Absolutely, and we've seen that through, you know, working with Eon Next Veloci Racing, and obviously you know way better than me, but when I think back to, you know, the first season, and some of the challenges with charging the car, the way that you as drivers could get that performance out and you were obviously maxing it out, but you know, even the battery limitations there. And now obviously, you know, the racing, the recent wins in Scotland, where you're you know, able to push even harder, to push the car even harder. And we're seeing a version of that, obviously not as fast, not, not as the same driving <laughs> style, right? But we're seeing that at home. So what the limitations are getting pushed and developed all the time. And when we're working with, you know, big businesses to make sure that they're actually changing energy from a cost into an asset for them. And that's through flexibility and what we mean by that is renewable solutions like solar, like battery, like to be charging from the grid. They can take what was once something they spent money on into you know, an asset where they can actually generate positive revenue. So it's not just about testing, you also have an academy which we're standing in front of, which is all about training as well. Yeah, so typically we are the ones which have first time hands on the product, which then makes sense also to train the installers. So the installers will come here to this facility, um, I imagine in the, the boardroom there'll be some, some theory and then this is the first sort of hands on thing that they do. Yeah, so it's not only installers, it's installers, it's sales, yeah. it's, it's in the end everyone who needs to interact with the product, yeah? Because also sales must sell the product properly, which will mean they need to understand not only PowerPoints and data sheets, they need to understand the product. And that's a chance here to train them, what is this product really doing? For example, here we have different installations for different regions, you can see. A battery could be well isolated and working well in a rough minus climate condition, or being really well cooled, so less isolated, working really well in heat locations. 
One of the key pillars of Extreme E is equality and providing more opportunities for men and women to get involved in sustainable motorsport. I guess a facility like this is really helping as well to encourage more opportunities and more access to learning for greener jobs for the future. Yeah, of course. My six years old daughter also every time tries to come with me here and is really engaged to do the things and to become, become an engineer, yeah. Yeah, to also work here and just working on the future. And I think that's one of the big barriers we, we need to remove to show everyone that it's safe, that it's easy to use, to have that and to do this small thing you can do to improve the future. That's really inspiring. Um, thank you so much for showing us around. It's been incredible to see it um, and be part of the E.ON family and, and kind of be part of all the work that, that you guys are leading the way in, in sustainability. So thank you very much for, for your time and having us here. Yeah, thanks for, for being here and happy to see you back and hopefully with your car. Yeah, so once, <laughs> We're going to make that happen. <laughs> yeah, and so once you have the ice challenge, uh, yeah. give me a call. We'll do our prep here. We will do the I prep here. Thank, thank you very you. much.